Welcome to First United Methodist Church Online. We are so glad that you are with us to worship this morning. If you would like to have closed captioning, we would invite you to find your toolbar on the bottom of YouTube and press the little icon that says CC. Um, that way you'll be able to um, see the words as the worship unfolds this morning. We would also invite you to take a look at your bulletin. Um, we have been emailing those out. If you don't get a copy of that and you would like to, please contact the church office. We would also invite you to um, stay in touch with us with Facebook and all the different announcements that we put there. We're now going to send it to Pastor Pat to welcome all of us to worship this morning. Good morning and welcome to Billings First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat Lewis and I'm inviting all of you, each of you, to join us because each of you is of sacred worth. Each of you are wonderful and glorious in God's creation and each of you are being called to serve God in all your glory and to be part of God's body, Christ's body here on earth. As we join together this morning, let's take a deep breath. And breathe in all of God's goodness. And as we breathe that goodness in, allow it to be part of us and allow ourselves to be part of that goodness together. And then as we breathe back out, release all of your worries and your tensions, your concerns and your cares, and be present in the world. Let's pray together for a brief moment. Heavenly Creator of all, we give thanks that you have gathered us here today in your glory to be part of your wonderful world. Open our hearts to see all and each as glorious creations and open us to be hearing your voice in our lives this day and always. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. the grave. 
The announcements for today, first, we will be having communion, drive-through communion in the church parking lot today between 10.30 and 11 or so. If you're late, then come on down. Um, we will um, encourage you to wear your mask in your vehicle. We will uh, present you with uh, communion. Um, we also invite you to bring the kids because we will be doing a blessing of the backpacks. So bring the backpacks and we will have a, a little charm for them as well. Um, we would love to see you and, and take part in this second time that we have done the uh, drive through communion. The next announcement that we have is about next Sunday, Rally Sunday. And we are excited to announce we will be hosting an outdoor worship at Urbasca Baseball Field, which is on the corner of Polly and 17th. We would invite you to bring your lawn chairs, bring shade because there's not a lot of trees, um, and we will be worshiping at 1030. So we would love to have all of you as well as your neighbors and friends that you might want to uh, invite. Uh, bring your masks. We will socially distance in the outfield and we will enjoy worship together. Hope to see you there. How are you doing on phone tag? How many people did you tag this week? Do it again next week. And hopefully, if they have not heard about our live worship in at the baseball field, you can fill them in while you take them. I would invite you to join in the prayer of worship. Heavenly creator of all, open our eyes to see the iniquities of the world. Let us be present with equality and not our greed. Let us lift our neighbors so they have what they need and provide for all. We pray this day and every day. Amen. I get to share with you a story of the community this morning. 
This past Monday was International Overdose Awareness Day. We advertised it on social media, and I'm so thankful that many of you uh, came out and showed support, and many of you also sent me texts uh, saying you were praying for me, and I greatly appreciate that. What a wonderful event this was. It was an event to build awareness around the issue of overdose, and it also was a chance for families and people to gather together to grieve and to tell stories of the ones that have been taken. It was such a powerful event and to see people from all walks of life come together and put their arms around each other and try to find ways that we can love each other through difficult times in this community. It truly was an extraordinary evening. Um, that is the power of community, and it was certainly on display last Monday. Our first reading today is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. What a beautiful sound and what a beautiful noise we all make when we sing together like that. That worship is just such an important part of who we are and what we are. And as we join together now to, to worship God and pray together, I invite you to find a comfortable place in your home where you can sit, relax, or you can stand and pray. But as we lift up the different voices throughout this prayer, please speak forward the names of those that you want to lift up. Lean into the prayers and open your heart to be present with them. And let's pray together. Heavenly Creator of all, we invite your presence to be upon us. For us to be open and, and, and available to your word in our lives and in our hearts. And for us to feel you move through us. We are so divided in this world. We are so angst-ridden that we take this moment of prayer and breath and we are present with you. Bless us this day as we move through this time to be present with you. We lift up those who are hurt and injured, those that are ill, those that are suffering from long-term disease, and those who are battling COVID. And we lift the names of those who are in the hospital or who are working through times of illness to you. 
and as we lift these names. We ask that you be present with them and heal those who are to be healed. And for those who are so ill that they are to be with you, allow them to be pain-free and surrounded by love and peace as we journey through this space. For all who are mourning this day, the loss of loved ones and friends, for all who are alone in the world and feeling separated from you, we invite you to lift each as we say their names. Be present with the lost. Be present with the hurting. And be present with us as we grieve and mourn. We lift to this day the joys that we share, the new births in our lives, the new people that have come into our time and our space, our friends and those that surround us. And we give thanks for the blessings and the abundance that you have shared with us, that you have showered upon us. And during this time, we give a special thanks for those blessings that we lift now. Bless us that as we remain your servants, that we continue to see the abundance in our lives. And bless us too, that as we move forward into the world, we share that abundance with others. We ask for your blessings on our leaders, on the leaders of our country, of our state, of our community. We ask for your blessings that you guide them, that you open their hearts, soften their hearts, to see the world around them and to be present, to provide the love for the world that we ask. Allow us to be at peace with our neighbors. Allow all who are hungry to be fed. Allow those that are searching for a space to live to find nurturing and a roof over their heads. And allow there to be peace this day and always. We pray this to you as we pray to you the words that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us instead from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second reading of the day is from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. But when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble. And they said, He has gone to the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's take a moment and breathe and allow the words of, of the scripture to come across us and wash over us. Heavenly Creator, allow these words to wash over us and wash us clean of all that separates us from you. Fill us instead with your, your love, your mercy, your grace in our lives till we are overflowing, until we hear your meaning and your words. 
And as your love overflows in our lives, allow it to flow forward for us to become your hands and feet among all people. This we pray. Amen. Well, a young man was driving through Montana, and as he's driving through Montana, making his sales calls, you know how those salespeople are, he came across this, this farm just outside of Billings. A little farm, it had a number of pigs on it, but one pig in particular caught his attention. And as he saw that pig, he thought, that's the strangest sight I've ever seen. You see, the pig was running around with three legs bandaged up pretty good, and it looked like really nice bandages. That's a strange thing to see on a pig. So he thought, well, I'm just going to stop up the road here and check and see what's going on. And he pulled into the farm, and the farmer came out to greet him and said, hi, what's going on? And he said, hey, I just stopped by to ask you about that pig. And the farmer starts in, and he says, you cannot believe that pig. That pig is some pig. This morning, when we got, we were sleeping, and we were laying in bed, we heard this racket downstairs, and, and it's the pig, and he woke us up, and, and he saved us. There was a big gas leak in the house, and he drug us all outside, and it saved our lives. And the guy said, wow, that's, a, that's an amazing story. And that's how he lost his leg. He said, no, no, that's not how he lost his leg. You know, later on this afternoon, I got out there in a muddy spot, and the tractor tipped over and fell down on me and just pinned me to the ground. And that pig came over and ran up underneath it and lifted that, that tractor up off of me. And gosh, I, I got free, and, and, and I was able to get out. And the young man says, well, and that must be when he lost his leg. And he said, no, no, that's not when he lost his leg. And the young man scratching his head. Well, he says, I'm, I just don't quite understand. How did he lose his leg? And he said, well, well, that looks like a pretty good eating pig, but you wouldn't eat that good a pig all at one time, would you? Now, I think you know that farmer saw something more in that pig than just meat. But the hog was just raised for nothing but meat. Sometimes we're judged by the way we look, not by the things that are going on within us. And I think that this short story really talks to us today in so many ways. You know, we're more than the customer that just runs into the store to buy a diet pop or an ice cream. We're, we're complex kind of people, and we can't be judged by just the first impression that we get when, we, when we're seen by somebody. There's so many lives each day that we see that are complex as well. I've never liked being the one that's been on the judge to side. You know, I'm not the one that have people take a look at me and say, oh, he's a, he's a farm boy, he's a ranch boy, he goes to college, so he's a highfalutin whatever. Uh, he's a radio announcer or he's a, he's a salesman. I, you know, labels are other people's judgments of who I am. And as we've moved through this time, I, I like better when I can set the parameters and say, no, I'm a father or I'm a husband, I'm a good guy, I'm, a, I'm trustworthy, I'm lovable, whatever. But you wouldn't know that by just looking at me. And that's what I think happens with each of us at home, is, is that people are judging us all of the time. People are putting this picture of what they think we are on us ahead of things. You know, and in our story today, that's exactly what's going on. Zacchaeus is being judged for being that pesky little short Jewish tax collector guy. Now, I said a couple of words right there that you probably made judgments about, pesky little short tax collector guy. I don't know. But each of us is making those judgments as we move around. Nevertheless, Zacchaeus was chosen for the gifts that he was given and the gifts that he gave. See, Jesus saw something in Zacchaeus that made him stand out, something beyond what we see in Zacchaeus. I once knew a guy years ago that bought some equipment, and he'd go to the dairies in the community that we lived in and he'd pump the urea and he'd pick up the manure from the cattle that were at the dairies then he'd take it out and he'd spread it all over the fields of the cotton farmers that were in the community and he'd spread the manure over the cotton and then he'd take the urea and they'd put it in liquid fertilizer and they'd spray it back on things later he made money on both sides but you know people people only judged him because he was a dirty smelly stinky farmer until the day that he passed away and they built a local high school and named it after him. It seemed like a strange thing to do until you found out that he paid for that high school, lock, stock, and barrel, and felt that people really needed an education because he struggled to get his. Our judgments really are a profound thing 
and for us, each of us, to feel separated from the condemnation of society that surrounds us, the, the judgment that other people's put on us, the things that are laid out there that are pressed down upon you and me each day telling us who and what we are, boy, I don't like that. I'm supposing you don't either. And the thing is, as people begin to judge and take a look at us for being from Montana or growing up on a ranch or a farm or driving a pickup or whatever, that doesn't tell them who we are or what we are. You know, being judged by the school you went to doesn't tell people how smart you are or intelligent you are. It just is their way of making you feel small from a very disapproving direction. You know, sometimes people just look at us and it's enough to make us know that they don't judge it. They're judging us in a, in a way that we don't want to be judged. Don't they know who we are? Don't they know that we're church-going, good, kind people that contribute to our society and make big changes? Don't they know that we've got a strong heart that gives towards so many different causes or helps to make a big change in our world? No matter what we've done, it's what other, might, other people might think that we've done that so often scars and scratches at us. Shouldn't there be some mercy shown in all of this? And yet, how many times have we judged others? I mean, think about Zacchaeus. You've already made a few judgments on him, and he was definitely judged. And right now, I want you to ask yourself, have I judged another based on their appearance? How about based on their political party? How about Maybe the fact that they're, uh, they just don't have a job. Or maybe, maybe they're uh, people on the street that you see over here at 27th Avenue and 4th Avenue North or 3rd Avenue North. You know, the folks that you see up on the corner. What do you think of them when you go by? You're making a judgment right now based on observation only. Have you stopped to talk to them or find out more about them? See, the problem is maybe you've been judging as well. And maybe you even judge people within your family. Do you have one of those good-for-nothings that's there someplace or the know-it-all? I know I'm the know-it-all in our family. At least that's what everybody tells me. It's sad. But so much of what we do back and forth is try to weigh our worth against somebody else's. Try to figure out who we are based on what other people are. And yet Jesus is inviting us through this story to put all that down for just a little bit, to put our differences aside and to look deep within the individual, to see the goodness within them, to see them for what they contribute to the world and, and how they bring something light into our world, to change our world literally forever. Each person is a child of God, and each child of God is therefore to be loved by each of us just as a brother or a sister, a sibling. But putting what they've done aside for a moment and to see them in a relationship like that, that's very hard to do. But that's exactly what Jesus is asking us to do. That mercy that we need to show each other. And that mercy that is shown back to us through seeing others as they are. You know, out in the world there are believers and there are those that don't believe. And they're all around us. And how we treat each person is how we'll be seen for the work in the world that we do by Jesus when we get there. And how do you think Jesus is going to judge us? Is it going to be with justice? If you didn't do this, are you going to be punished? Or is it going to be with mercy? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy you see Jesus is telling us already that he will be merciful with us and that we will be found not guilty but loved for the love that we share in the world the mercy in the world that we shared and showed through each of our actions one piece at a time one person at a time just like that pig seeing each person for more not for the image of what that person was. We're being called to see the others around us for what they are and be a potential change maker in their lives. 
to unfold their hearts and open them up so that we can see the love in their lives and they, in turn, can see the love in ours. So no matter what you see when you look at somebody, I want you to stop and think. Labels like farmer or rancher, cowboy or cowgirl, druggie or drunk or adulterer or lesbian or gay or black or white or red begin to fade into the ether that surrounds us all when we look to the inside person, to the seed of mercy and amazing grace in each of us. We're all part of the body of Christ. We're all children of God. And if we can see the hope and the possibilities that's within each of us, that's where we truly see mercy. Mercy for us and mercy surrounding us. And in return, we begin to see mercy shown toward us through others' eyes. Jesus calls us to be merciful and love abundantly those whom we have only one thing in common with, that we're all children of God. And for that, we're blessed this day and always. Amen. As we take a moment this morning to contemplate giving of gifts and service for the mission and ministry of this church, I would just like you to count your blessings. This is a difficult time for all of us, but you need to know that we are still doing wonderful missions and ministries from and on this corner. And it's because you have been so faithful to the giving that we're able to do that. You will see the text giving number as well as the online address and you can also continue to send those pledges in. But I just really want you to know that it is still making a difference and we still are doing ministry from here. We come now to that time where we celebrate the great Thanksgiving so I'll invite you to bring your, your communion elements forward and we'll bless them here in just a quick moment. But let's pray together as we lead into communion. Heavenly Creator, bless us during this time to receive of your body and blood, to know of your body and blood in our lives and to understand the story behind it as it relates to us today. Bless us to be present. Bless us to see you now and always through this action of peace. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. And on that night when they gathered together, the friends of Jesus and himself sat there at the table, and as they did, Jesus reached and took a piece of bread. And when he took the bread, he gave thanks to our heavenly creator, and he broke it. And as he broke it, he said, Take this and eat this, each of you. This is my body, which is given for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks. And after he'd given thanks, he took it and shared it with those in the room and invited them by saying, Take this and drink this, each of you. For this is my blood, which is spilled for a new covenant, for the forgiveness of sin and for the resurrection of the body. And each time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So each time we remember, we do this in remembrance of Christ, remembering through the body and blood that Christ has died and Christ has risen, and Christ will come again in glory to share not only this mercy with us, but to be bountiful in his grace and in his love for all mankind. Today I invite you to lift your elements toward the screen as we bless them. Heavenly creator of all, bless these elements in each room everywhere. May your presence be felt through the body and blood of Christ spilled before us, 
Though we're not worthy, allow us through this action to be present and to be part of your grace and mercy in our lives. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. The body of our Lord, which is given for you, broken for you, for the forgiveness of sin and the blood of resurrection and new life, take them in remembrance of Christ. Amen. Now, as we have shared the body and blood, let's join together in a moment of thanksgiving. Heavenly Creator, you have blessed us with your gifts of body and blood, of your gifts of redemption, of your mercy, and of your grace in our lives. Bless us as we go forward to do your great works in the world, and bless us to do your wonders and be your miracles among all people. This we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to go forth into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ among all men. May God Almighty bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. And may he lift you gently to move forward in the world to be his mercy among all people. We pray this today and always. Amen. Go in peace. makes us whole. You shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own. You're making me like you.